Okay, so if I was a, say I had never met a Christian, yeah. okay, and I picked up the Bible, yeah. and I wanted to find out yeah. what this religion was all about, yeah. from that Bible, I guarantee you, I'm not going to uh, be able to ascertain whether this actually saves me or that saves me. I would go away reading the Quran and then somebody like yourself who read the Quran much more in depth and studied it more in depth would say, no, no, Ray, you have misinterpreted this verse, you misinterpreted this verse, da, 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 da. So for anyone in the same boat, new to the Quran, would read it and come across contradictions, queries, challenges, concerns. I'll tell you why you're wrong. So I'll tell you why you're wrong. Because I have. Okay, I'll tell you why you're, I have. I'll tell you why you're wrong. But I have personally. Okay. Well, <laughs> the verse that you've quoted doesn't even exist. It's not that easy to interpret. It's a much more complex uh, message. When you read all the message and you reconcile it, which many uh, Christian scholars have done, and I've done to quite an extent myself, I'm not as good as scholars, but I've done it to a reason. I have answered to these questions, and there are reasons why certain scriptures like that appear to contradict others, and I sympathize why non Christians like Muslims do draw those conclusions. But I can categorically say it is a misinterpretation of scripture. Okay, but wouldn't you say that something that is very complex to interpret. On those particular scriptures. Okay. The fundamental concept of non-preservation would only increase that confusion or complexity when it comes to interpreting because now you're not only interpreting God's words verbatim but you're interpreting effectively corruption as well as some of God's words. Do you see my point? I, I can respond to that. My point is this. In all the preservation that we have, in the level of corruption you've got, 99 whatever percent, which studies have been done, on the validity of those core beliefs that we believe, which are straightforward, by the way, there is no complexity in the death of Christ, the deity of Christ, the divinity, well, in other words, the divinity of Christ. That is really clear, easy to read and skip. So, so, so you're so saying me, there's no confusion, for example... No, let me just finish. Yeah, this, sorry. And then you're yeah. more than welcome to, uh, yeah, yeah. to respond to it. So what I'm saying is those core beliefs that we have are, one, not very clear, two, are preserved. The only areas that aren't... There is a level of uh, lack of preservation or error or manuscript variance, whatever you want to call it, is not impacting any of those beliefs. And they are all to 99% of minor, unimportant aspects of the scripture. So scripture in terms of what is core and what is key and what is what we call God's truth is preserved. Okay. And that's what we're concerned about. So, so logically... Does that make sense? Yeah, it, well, it makes sense from, from, your, from your point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The, uh, um, the, sure. the, the issue here is this, though, right? right? If you say that those core teachings have been preserved, yes. i.e. the divinity of Christ, yeah. Christ dying on the cross for yes. our salvation, etc., uh -huh. etc., et yeah. yeah. okay, then you could only really cl you could only claim that those similarities of the message are valid if you have something to go back on, i.e the earliest scriptures, so literally from year 10, year 20, year 30, year, year 40, year 50. Do you understand my point? Not entirely. But, but well, so what I mean by that is this. Yeah. If you have a, the Council of Nicaea in yeah. the fourth century, yeah. that's still debating these things that you're talking about, divinity of Christ, uh, you know, and all of these core concepts that you say... So who's debating them? Christians aren't debating them. Well, in, in the Council of Nicaea, this was when it was finally asserted that Jesus was in fact God and that he was the, the, the salvation and therefore the sacrifice. Right, right, All right, of these things were... That's quite strictly true. Well, Constantine in the 4th century, fourth century yeah. right? And in, and in uh, 336 or 420, what was the Council of Nicaea? 352, I think. 345, no, 345 right? 345. Okay, I'm close. The, these things were being discussed, right? Yeah. Now, uh, one of, one well, of the, look, what are the other fundamental things? Okay, look, look matter, well, they were not discussed. They were, they were actually finalized. Well, do you know what they were actually the trying canon, to The canon, the canon was fine. No, no, but let me go, let me make my, a, a more important point, perhaps, sure. you know? Yeah. 
you have within Christendom concepts where Paul is asked whether he's teaching the people that circumcision and the dietary laws are not necessary because he was preaching that to the people that the circumcision and dietary laws were not necessary anymore. Yeah. He was summoned and asked whether he was preaching these things. Mm -hmm. And they said to him, to prove that you're not preaching these things, we want you to shave your... Is it a Nazarene vow, the vow? Where you shave your head, right? Mm -hmm. sure we'll and make a sacrifice, <laughs> right? So Paul is, Paul, Paul, Paul is being told to do this because he's teaching the people that circumcision and the dietary laws don't apply anymore. Right. He's being, in effect, reprimanded. I'm not quite sure what the point is. Uh, no, well, look, look, I'm giving you the, po the point here. Oh, okay. And yet, the reason why they're saying that to him is because they believe that those laws should be adhered to. Paul is preaching something else. He's being reprimanded for, to, for preaching right, something right. else. No, 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 hold on a second, yeah, right? right. But that's what you believe today, is what Paul taught you. So do you believe circumcision and the dietary laws are necessary? Right, what, what you're doing is you're going into some other aspects. Don't forget that these, these are what we call peripheral aspects. They're not about the core uh, value of what, what God is trying to teach his people. Um, but there was, of course, a transition from the Old Testament law to the new law that Jesus put forward which is called the New Covenant. And there was a transition through that. So there was going to be a level of difficulty with certain individuals. But we don't look at Paul and say that with everything that Paul said and Paul explains, it's necessarily we are in agreement with. He's just a human being, like all the rest of us. But the only importance that we will have is two things, is, is what Jesus spoke and two, what Paul spoke which was directly on the authority of Christ. So there are specific things that Paul did speak of as a representative of Christ, and those things was about how we come under the covenant of Christ and how we can be saved through that and how we have to understand what happens from the death of Christ going forward. Well, was Paul inspired by the Holy Ghost? Yes. So but not, not necessarily so, so, 24-7. So not 24-7? Of course not. It's, so it's so, therefore, so therefore Paul could have preached things that were not true? He could have done. He could have done. He's a human being. Okay. He's imperfect. So how can you rely on Paul's teaching then? Because when you reconcile it back, so in Scripture, the difference is what we see in Scripture is what has been inspired. And when we look at those Scriptures and when we do proper study, we can see how it reconciles. And because we can see the reconciliation, how it does tie in, then we're comfortable with it. But if it didn't tie in, that would be a different ball game. But because we can see how it does tie in, and it's not easy, I will accept that, because of the transition through the old law and the new law, and the way that some of the old law was still being challenged at the time, it does add a level of... Uh, so do you believe that dietary laws and circumcision are necessary for Christians to do today? No. You don't? No. So when Paul was teaching uh, the Gentiles not that circumcision and the dietary laws were not necessary, yeah. was he right in teaching yeah. them that? He was. Yes. So why did he take the Nazareth vow and shave his head and do the sacrifice? Well, we'll have to look at that detail and understand why. There'll be a reason. I don't know specifically. But that doesn't mean uh, that he had a reason. No, it, it and, and he may have even been there to it. Brother, brother, it means, it clearly means that what? Paul was teaching something not to the people. Hold on, let me just finish. Either Paul was teaching something that God did not want him to teach and it went against what God was telling him to teach or those disciples who summoned him and basically summoned him, told him to take the Nazareth right, vow right. and shave his head and make the sacrifice okay, me, were either wrong. Right. But they can't both be right. Let me put it this way. Let me, let, let me put it this way. When you're going into that level of detail on a specific incident, we'll have to look at the scripture. We'll have to look at the, the context and have a proper study of it to give you a proper response. I don't know that particular incident off by heart, so I couldn't give you a very That's good, fine. I, 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 I response. That's fine. I respect that. I respect that. But I believe... But, but my point if is... It's, sorry, let me yeah. If it's in Scripture, I am very, very confident there's a very good explanation for it. That's all I can say. Yes. Very confident. Right. Hugely confident. Right. And I'm happy to go away, yes. get that back, yes. and we can have a shared conversation later on, maybe next week, right. on that particular point. Not okay. a problem at all. Okay. But my, my point to you here is this. Yeah. This is just one incident I'm, I'm showing you. 
you or one event. Right. Okay. And I, I could do the same with the car. I could put loads. No, no, but look. But, the, but, but, the, but if you, even if you were to be able to do that, okay, if you're very confident, right? Yeah. Even if you were able to do that, sure. then all you're admitting is that they both are false or no, both no, have no, been changed. No, 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 that's not what I'm admitting. Of course. I'm admitting we both can do that challenge. No. We can throw these things. Out. But, but what I'm but, saying is, I wouldn't do it to you unless you were happy for us to have an agreement in advance to have a discussion about those level of detail. No, I, look, no I accept that. But what I'm saying to you we is this. That, so what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying to you is this, and I, I do, I, I do get rather confused when I discuss this with yeah. fellow Christian brothers and sisters, because they say to me, all scriptures are inspired by God. Yeah. They say Paul was inspired by God, yes. by the Holy Ghost. Yes. I've never heard a Christian say to me once that sometimes he was and sometimes he wasn't. No, 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 never. No, no. I've never heard that before. I'll tell you why. I'm just saying. I'm just because saying. They probably put that in context of Scripture. What I'm saying is this. Not every word that Paul says is written in the book. No. When it comes to religion... You see my point? No, but when it comes to religious values, you expect that the inspired by God means that the will of God will be carried out by that disciple of God. In this case, Paul. Right. Now, if he's teaching an aspect of religion, I'm not talking about whether you should plant flowers in this pot or that pot, or whether you should chop that tree or that tree. I'm talking about aspects of religious doctrine. Right, 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 right. Okay. Let me, let me explain something. What I'm saying to you is that right. if on those points yeah. you're admitting to me that he might have got it wrong, no, that's not what I'm quite saying. Oh, let me qualify. Or that he might not have been inspired by God. Let me qualify. Please, Please do. What I'm saying is this: if it's in Scripture, we are confident because it's in Scripture. Paul would have been inspired by God to write down what is in Scripture because part of that, is that spirit of working in Paul is to lead Paul to writing. Now, that doesn't mean that in every walk of life, because we simply don't know the answer to this, we cannot therefore assume that every single minute of Paul's life where he's talking religious things is necessarily 100% correct in the sense of God's spirit is working at it every minute. We just don't know the answer to that. So I could never make that claim because I simply can't prove it. Right, so that means... So the only proof I can make and the only thing I can uh, 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 defend is about what Paul has written in Scripture and only that alone. Okay. Well, my, okay, my, 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 point, well, my point to you is this. As Brother yeah. Paul just pointed out... Yeah. A fundamental difference in what Jesus is saying that is that needs uh, uh, that a person needs to necessitate uh, you know an everlasting life, i.e., heaven. Okay, and what Paul is preaching well, well, again, in relation again, to what I'm saying is it's a misunderstanding of those scriptures. We can we can go down that road next week or whenever but happy to but it is a misinterpretation it's not a direct contradiction the way you think it is okay so if I was a say I had never met a Christian yeah okay and I picked up the bible yeah and I wanted to find out yeah what this religion was all about yeah from that bible I guarantee you I'm not going to uh, be able to ascertain whether this actually saves me or that saves me in fact if I was to believe that Jesus was a prophet of God and his words are what, what, what matter, I'd have to ignore what Paul said. No. I would have to. How can I reconcile no. the two? I, can't. I, would, I would accept that if you just read the Bible, you would very likely come across some things that you would say, I got that. And you would definitely have passages where I'm struggling with. I don't understand that. Some appear to be contradictions. I would accept that. Naturally, and this is, this is the reason for this, is... By the, God explains it this way. If you go to read the Bible alone without anything else but just you academically reading it, you could go astray in your understanding of Scripture. But if you pray about it and the Spirit comes upon you and through the Spirit you're asking God to help you with Scripture, we believe the Spirit will then help you to those truths, to that understanding, which is like I said at the beginning, does involve others, because God will lead you to others that have studied. And through that process, like I myself will be a very good testimony of that, is that through that study, I have understanding. So what would happen is that for a new person, firstly reading, they would 
I have questions, so hopefully they will go to somebody and say, look, I've read this Bible, but I've got a few questions. Go to somebody that has studied it and is more mature. And through that process, just like anybody reading the Quran, if I read the Quran on my own, I've read the Quran on my own, and I've got loads of things in there, I'm reading, wow, that doesn't make sense. It seems to be very, very uh, 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 strong for men and not very favorable for women, if I read it. You know, I look at two, uh, Surah 248, I think is a good example, about, you know, where if a woman gets attacked, she needs four witnesses. That's not true. No, it's not true. It's in the scripture. No, it's not. No, it's not. Well, I've read it. No, you've not read it, because what it actually says, and this is my point. You see, well, this is, is it, so my point was it doesn't, it doesn't say that. So, okay, that's fine. So you're doing what I'm doing. So what I'm saying no, is... No, 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 no. Can you quote the verse? When I read... No, no. This, this let's quote the verse. What, what are you yeah, saying? Let me just first of all say this. My point is this. If I read it as a just person off the street... It doesn't even read like second, that. One second. If it I just read the, the Quran, as I have read... And I mean, I'm, I'm obviously just estimating roughly that's it. I don't know what the size of the yeah. set. But it's something to do with that. I can pull it up in a minute. No, but it's important. We can, we, we, can, we can look at that in a second. That's not a problem. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not shying away from it. But my point is this. I would go away reading the Quran and then somebody like yourself who read the Quran much more in depth and studied it more in depth would say, no, no, Ray, you have misinterpreted this verse, you misinterpreted this verse, da, 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 da. So for anyone in the same boat, new to the Quran, would read it and come across contradictions, queries, challenges, concerns. I'll tell you why you're wrong. So I'll tell you why you're wrong. Because I have. Okay, I'll tell you why you're I have. I'll tell you why you're wrong. But I have personally. Okay. Well, <laughs> the verse that you've quoted doesn't even exist. Let me show you the verse. Please, Let's please do. Yeah. You see, when Christians say this to me, that Reve good. revelation needs in interpretation. I mean, but it's not yeah, right. that. Yeah, that's Revelation it. needs interpreta interpretation. Interpretation. And all scriptures require interpretation. I would accept that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's However, yeah. and this is the problem, you see. Right. When it comes to Tawheed, the oneness of God, without associating any partners to God, there's no confusion on that point. Right, yeah, what does that make? It doesn't necessarily make it true, though. No, I'm not saying it does. What I'm saying to you, though, that within the Bible itself, you have Jesus saying explicit statements. I of myself can do nothing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Explicit. Yes. You know, explicit that the uh, all power, all ma the majesty of is lies with God Almighty. These are explicit statements. And as I said before, no, no. Uh, sorry, they are explicit statements to the divinity of God the Father alone. You understand my point? You don't find that issue in the Quran. The Quran very clearly says, "Lam yalid wa lam yulad." He begetteth not, nor is he begotten. Wa lam yakul lahu kufu wa nahad, and there's nothing comparable to God. We don't have a problem in the Quran of interpretation of the oneness of God or the Prophet Muhammad just the Prophet Muhammad being just a man a messenger sent to you as as a as a mercy as a messenger in the Bible however these very fundamental core foundational concepts are open to interpretation Jesus nowhere in the Bible says I am God worship me so so you would expect something so fundamental, so foundational to be explicit. But it is explicit. It's not explicit, my friend. In fact, you find... I, you go to uh, Romans, uh, no, Hebrews 1.8. This is a good example. Oh, if you go into scripture, yes. as I said, it's about interpretation of scripture. And there are clear passages. You're not picking the clear passages. Clear passages that say Jesus is in a trinity right. a, a triune no. a, a tri no. it doesn't say that does it no, no. no it doesn't say that but that's not that's, that's, not, that's, that's another not, but that's not our explicit belief but that's a core belief no it's not well, the trinity is not no. a core belief no you don't let have me, to believe you don't have to believe in let the trinity explain. no that's right oh you don't no let me explain okay, it. All right. let me explain what it is okay. what we do have to believe is the father is God right. because it says so we do need to believe that the Holy Spirit is God because it's good enough as far as the evidence in Scripture. Where does it say that in the Bible, that the Holy Spirit is God? Not in those words. Oh, it doesn't say no. that. Okay. Let, me, let, me just, let me just straight put this point to you. In the Bible, there are many things that are not explicitly said, but by reading the Bible, it's the only conclusion you can That's make. not true. So that, I, I, that is simply not true. Yeah, it is true. No. Yes. No. For me, absolutely. Well, for you, because you yeah. believe in the doctrine. No, no, no. I'm saying I can provide evidence to this. No, but you're superimposing. Provide, no, you're no, no. superimposing no, no, your no. view. No, no. I can provide evidence. Not a problem. I'm happy to back it up. I'm happy to back up to prove why I believe what I believe. That's not a problem. We can do that another day because that's a, it's a big topic. But happy to do it. I'm not shying away from that. Happy to do it. But what I'm saying is that these other verses 
are complex verses, they are difficult verses. I know the Muslims pick them a lot in this in the corner. They are very typical verses like John 73 and so on. But there are ways of understanding when you reconcile it. Until you do that, you will always go away with this particular question. But you believe you believe that Jesus is God, right? Yeah. You believe that the Holy Ghost is God. I'll, I'll give you one verse. No, no, but I'm asking you. you yes, believe, yes, okay. yes. Does it say that in the Bible? As good as, yes. No, not as good as. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Does it say the yes. Holy Ghost is God? Well, let me let me do pick on Christ. Let's yes. say where the Father calls His Son God. Would yes. that be good enough for you? There, there were. There, sorry, I would say that would be good enough. What's that? The Father. Yes. Calls His Son Jesus God. Yes. So he says that you are you are you are God. Explicitly. Okay. Well, I'd have to get that. I'd have to find I'm out from. It to you now. Yeah. Because you you're not believing the word I'm saying. So let me just back it up with a, with the actual verse. This is Hebrews 1, verse 8. And you have totally uh, a right to question any of this until we see the verses in question. So I'll go to verse 1 then. But This is the Father speaking. He says, But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever the scepter of righteousness, the scepter of your kingdom. So the Father is saying to his Son, Your throne, O God. Your throne, O God. Is forever and ever. So, so, that, that, calling... so that is where God is calling Jesus God. His is Son. It? Yes. Okay. Well, I'd have to. I'd, 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 to I'd, I'd, well, first of all, I'd have to find out what the Hebrew actually is for that word, because I, as he, does he call him Elohim or Ella in Hebrew? Is that the word that's used? Well, no, it wouldn't be because we don't know that. Okay. So because, what's the word in Hebrew that's used? This. This is the Septuagint, which yeah. would be the Greek. Of that word. Right, right. What is the word that is used by the Father? Hello? Yeah, yeah. One's the real truth. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so all I'm saying is, that's saying I'm going into the depth into behind the scripture, sure, but what I'm saying is, um, that is, when you look at the Greek word, it, it probably is going to be something like Elohim. That clearly, or whatever, I don't know the exact one, I have to look it up. But my point to you was but this, it is God. Okay, my point to you is this, even if that was, even if that is in the Bible, yes. how can you prove that that is God's words? Right. How can you convince me that all of those different versions, different manuscripts, yeah different additions and subtractions, right. right, that that wasn't added in. It's very simply. How can you prove that? Of the research that's been done, of the 5,856 uh, manuscripts we have, we do not see a variation on that verse. Okay. Well, uh, you've made a claim there, and, which you've, and, you've made a claim there. We, I, I would have liked Paul to actually be here because he would have verified that, well, whether well, that's even true or not. Right, right. Because, 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 no, because I do find, uh, uh, no, no disrespect to yourself, but people say all sorts of things. When you go away and verify right, afterwards, right. actually, you, you do, things can be very respect, different. With respect, just as much as we can do with the Quran, if you want to look at the specific verses, specific manuscripts, it's a big topic. Can you give me any example at all? Yeah. Of, uh, of, of the Qur'an being corrupted. Right. Any example at all? Not, not the hand, but yes, I can certainly provide that next time. You know, you know I find, this, I, I find, this, I find this conversation really um, somewhat, uh, you know, upsetting that where Christendom itself and academia within Christendom accepts that the scriptures were not preserved. The scriptures were not preserved. Not 100%. 100%. They weren't preserved. But, it, but the word that was important was... The scriptures were not preserved. You have no way, no way whatsoever of verifying that the truth was preserved and somehow the lies were not preserved or vice versa. You've got no way of proving that. Yes, we do. No. Yes, we do. Because we the, the do. very nature of... Because there's been massive studies on it. The very nature of corruption... The very, very nature of corruption means that people have added things in so now even if you do find even if you do find some statements even if you do find some statements now they're not reliable are they because you've had all these additions and subtractions that have been happening over the centuries and as a christian what i would say to you is that as a christian but what i would say to you is this that if we muslims were saying exactly the same thing to you about the quran 
that yes, there's all these different versions, and yes, we don't know who added that in. We don't know who the disciples actually were. A lot of these books were anonymous. We don't know whether they even came from God or not. Then you have an argument. What gospel he was talking about? When God was talking to Jesus. What gospel was that? Sorry. Wait, what gospel? Oh, let's look at that. Hebrews one eight. Hebrews one eight. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so what I'm trying to say to you is this, brother. Is this right? If I was, if I were a Christian, and I wanted to truly follow the, uh, you know, the, the doctrine of Christ, yeah. the teachings of Christ, yeah. I'd have to first ensure that His words, peace be upon Him, were preserved. Uh, because, because if they're not preserved, yeah, if his words are not preserved, then I have to ask the question, what is true and what is not true? So what I'm saying to you is that the words of Jesus has been preserved, even by very strong scholars that are against the Christian faith, like namely Bart Ehrman being a very quick that's, one. That's not true. Yes, yes it is. In his no. own book that he wrote, through his extensive studies, he admitted that all the core teachings, and he listed them out, the deity of Christ, the death of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, the salvation of Christ, all those core doctrines were untampered by any of the variations that he found. And all the variations he found had no impact on any of those core teachings. And that has been a, not just by Bart Ehrman, but by many, many scholars. You have to debunk all those scholars to really have a case to say that God's word in terms of what Jesus said is not accurate in terms of what we have in scripture. That's exactly what Bart Ehrman did not say. Bart, Bart, Bart Ehrman, in his la one of his last pre uh, recent debates with James White, and it's on, look, it's on record. People can go and check the debate. I'm, I'm not just saying something off the cuff. He was debating James White. James White said exactly what you just said. He gave him a whole list of things that doctrinally are completely opposite to one another and he explained to and he explained to them that that does change things the very the very the very foundational doctrinal concepts of christianity here's the problem with what you're saying and what you're saying to me is bart Ehrman is, is saying the opposite no, no, but he didn't. no 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 we're talking about two different things here i'm talking about the preservation of those main words of jesus christ basically was preserved so in other words you don't have a variation of those core things so when jesus says he died when you have that concept of jesus death when you have the concept of his deity when you have the concept of his salvation and the, and the plan of god through christ those words do not have a variation in any of the manuscripts. That's not true. So, so, that's so that's simply, my case. Not, that simply is not true. No, it is true. I'll tell you why. I'm, it's not, I'm simply saying it is true. I'll tell you why it's With not very true. Very good evidence. I'll tell, I'll tell you why it's not true. Because for that to be true, you would have to have the very earliest manuscripts in existence. No, they don't exist. No, no, I'll explain to you why. 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 If I assert that look, these teachings have been preserved, they have not been changed, I have to have something to compare them to. Yes. If I have nothing to compare them to, then, I have, then the question arises that the tens of thousands of manuscripts that existed yeah. second, third, fourth century yeah. that was selected and canonized into a Bible yeah. and then I don't find contradiction within those that I selected to fit my doctrine and I don't find major contradictions on those major points is not a way of validating your argument but that's not my argument that's, that's precisely, that's precisely let me, let me, what you're saying not quite so what you said there when you slightly changed the, the goalpost a bit is where there is no element what we call selection you mentioned this word selection what we're talking about is of all the copies that were discovered all the copies discovered, and there were actually about 30,000, because there's a lot of Latin copies as well. The, the study that's gone through to look at the uh, accuracy of Jesus' words have been verified by, by scholars, by very good study, to confirm that Jesus' words as we know them, in terms of his death, his di deity, uh, his, his salvation plan, etc., have been preserved and they're clear and they're evidential in 
a huge number of manuscripts. Now, I do accept that those manuscripts, when they were uncovered, were only started to be uncovered from the second century in small fragments and third century, a few more and so forth, and then fourth, fifth. Until we get seventh or eighth, we start to get more of a, a bigger accumulation. But what I'm saying is this, in all the thousands of manuscripts we've got, what we haven't got is back on the early, in those early periods, any contrary manuscripts that, that were found in those times. How would you know that? No one's uncovered them. No. It's open to everybody. No, do you, no they're not open to everybody. Yes, they're, they're securely, they're securely no, they no, they vaulted in the Vatican. If, if anybody... Very securely if anybody, kept. If anybody, wanted very to, securely if anybody kept. wanted to prove that those manuscripts weren't accurate, they've got every opportunity to provide the evidence. Okay. You know the... So um, where's the evidence okay. against it? Okay. Because when you uncover manuscripts yep. that fundamentally disagree with your doctrine, those are not those are not accepted in the canon. They're not accepted in the canon, and and many of those many of those manuscripts are not like you said what, what, what open. Well, you if you about? if you look at for example uh, Barnabas, right, right, Gospel of Barnabas, it's not accepted, is it? No, in the main canon. Yeah, right. and much of what you find in in in, in the uh, in the uh, Gospel of Saint Barnabas, yeah. Describes uh, Jesus and, and, and in James, James is writing as yeah. very human, not divine, right. not divine at all. Sure. But those are not okay. accepted, no, right. and those are not accepted not because oh they might be fabrications, they're not true, but because they don't conform to the belief of the Trinity. Here's my here's my problem with that. Of course, there are going to be other books. There's going to be writers that are going to do a number of things. There are going to be people that are going to oppose the book, and there were many opposers of Christianity at the time, and there were many people that were very anti-theist at the time. Yes, they were writing things against Christianity, against those. So you are going to have that. And you do get that with many, many books. You do get... But when we look at any book of that time, historically, with the amount of evidence to support it, can you name me any other book historically that old with the level of uh, historical backing that comes with a book that old? The Quran, yes. No. Yes. I'll explain to you why. Well, here's what, here's why. Okay, let me speak about the Quran. No, no, now. Let's let me, speak a bit about okay. the Quran. Let me explain something to you, brother. Sure. Yeah? Okay. First of all, well, but you see, we, we, we're talking about the Bible, but you know what? It's, it's okay. We can have, we can be fair. You can, we can talk yeah, about yeah. the Quran as I well. I think that's right? only fair. Okay. Yes. You know what? One thing that we're united on is that we love Jesus. Okay. Sure. As Muslims, Alhamdulillah, we love Jesus. Yeah. We 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 see his example, his true example. Okay. As an example from God. Right. That's what we're united on. Of course, what we differ on is whether we worship him or not. That is what we differ on. There's a few things we differ on. Well, I'm talking majorly, in a major way. That's one of the major ones. Yeah, but we love him. We respect him. We revere him. We revere Moses. We respect Moses and Noah. All of the prophets, all the messengers of Allah. Peace be upon all of them. Now, talking about, you see, look, when we talk about the scriptures yeah. and how preservation is very important. Yeah. Yes. Because it is important. Yes, I agree. Because without preservation, you, we don't know what is true and what is not true. To decipher it is very difficult. Whether you're a scholar or you're not, I'll, I'll tell you why. No, I get that. Because if the originals don't exist, at best, you can make a, 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 a guesstimate or an estimate or give your view as to why you accept it. We have the same problem with the Quran. We don't have the original. Now, hold on, hold on a second. Now, what you would have to find with the Quran today. Today, if there was corruption or multiple readings that are often given as an accusation, there are certain things that you must find as a reaction to that cause. They have to happen. And I would, I'll explain to you what I mean by that. If there is corruption or manipulation or fabrication, multiple readings, which is what we're told existed, then today you will never, 14 centuries down the road, have one unified reading throughout the world. It won't happen. Sounds all good, but I have an issue with it. Hold on a second. Uh, Especially when for the last 12 or 13 centuries plus, you have no fax machines, you have no internet, you have no mass media, mass marketing or anything else, okay, where you have concepts of people who have maybe have traveled to China or to Spain and they haven't even revised the whole Quran, just five chapters or ten chapters. 
Yet today, if you or I go to a mosque in Egypt or in um, America somewhere or in Pakistan or India and the Imam who is reading the Quran through memory, reciting. reciting the Quran through memory, makes a mistake of even a vowel. I'm not talking about an, a sentence. I'm not talking about a chapter. Right. I'm not talking about even a letter. Right. Not even, not even a letter. Not even a letter. I'm talking about whether you elongate that letter or you shorten the letter. Even on that minuscule way of pronunciation he will be corrected from behind and I would suggest humbly that that phenomena would be impossible if the if the cause if the cause that you said of corruption of manipulation of fabrication existed they could not have existed right right can I can I can I respond to this so there's some fundamental flaws with what you said okay First of all, we don't have the original Quran of the day of Muhammad. We don't have the original Quran of Uthman. When Uthman put the Qurans together, we have an understanding that a number of things happened. He put forward and distributed from many, many Qurans that were collected that he went through. That's not true. Well, no. uh, well, that's fine. I, I never interrupted you, so let me finish. Let me just go through this, because I would say there's many things that you said were untrue too. Okay. You know, so we'll go through this. Within the Quran, when, when uh, we, we don't necessarily, we don't, know, we don't know the originals of Muhammad, we don't know the originals of Uthman, and what we have understood in, in, that has been recorded is that through these histories, there was a collection of Qurans, they were then put together standardized and it was that standardized version was then distributed to at least seven areas now now within those areas what we have been seen with some evidence which i can provide is there were many many versions of the scribes written words of the quran that were looked at and many of which were burnt so there were lots of uh, Qurans that were looked at, they said, no, this isn't uh, a, 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 a whatever reason. There was a level of selection that went through. We haven't got the evidence exactly how that selection took place. All we know is that for all the many, many collections that they got, many, many were destroyed. And then a single standardized version was then established. And from that point, we have the Quran being distributed. However, what we also have which I will go against what that claim is about every vowel is the same, is we have the Deary, Deary Quran and the Wash Quran and so forth. And when you look at certain verses of Surah, some of them in certain verses say different words. And one example would be slave versus servant or whatever, whatever uh, I can't remember the other word. Very two clear different words. So not in every single word, in every single Quran, they are identical. And I'm happy to provide some evidence next week of the variances between the Qurans. Now, I'm not saying it's a big deal. I'm not saying that it changes your religion, but I'm just saying factually, it is not true that every vow, every sentence, every word of the Quran is identical all around the world. I say that is, a, that is an unfair claim. It is untrue and I can provide evidence for it. I believe there are 31 Qurans and there are variations on them. They're not big variations, I will admit that. The second issue I've got is before this even took place, we've got uh, evidence in hadiths that many areas of the scriptures got lost. So there were verses that got lost, verses that got eaten, and so forth. And they are in, there are, they are in some hadiths that I can provide evidence for, which are legitimate Sahir uh, hadiths, to suggest historically the development of the Quran is not as, as accurate as you claim. So my claim against that is the original Quran back in the Muhammad day is not the Quran you read today. Yeah, please, yeah.
No, no, not Christian values. This is nothing to do with Christianity whatsoever. Pure research of your materials. So, so let me explain to you. Okay. The, the boundary. When you analyse from the point of view, simple reason was that with you're saying that you should be allowed to live now until an end. So I said again. Even though the standing of when the revelation comes to an end. Can you tell us that it's all right or not? Can you tell us that it's all right or not? Can you tell us that it's all right or not? No, brother, we're talking about something else. They have the BBC, they share the military. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are involved. Okay, so there's a different law. The book of revelation is not in some respects. We've got a mic here. We're on a mic. We're on a mic. We're on a mic. No, I can't control it. But yeah, with respect, yeah, with yeah. Oh yeah, this is the mic, isn't it? Then, when the prophecy of him passed. There, there was a compilation made at that time, within two years of the Prophet's volume's death. And this was the first compilation, which no one seems to really talk about.